What's up, everybody? Axe Wizard here, back with some more Cairn content. I uh, I decided I'm going to make a video for every one of the 20 backgrounds inside of uh, the second edition of Cairn. Today, we're going to start with the R effects. And what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you three separate characters that I made and give you some ideas for how you can create your own character or even role play something like this or see if this if this background suits whatever fantasy you want to play. So first of all, what is an RFX? You are an artisan of the arcane, a smith of subtle forces. In the crucible of your workshop, the laws that govern this world are warped to suit your needs. So just reading that there, that makes me think of like a scientist, an alchemist, um, maybe an inventor. So you get quite a few different ways that you can play things just from there. And then once we scroll down here, you can uh, you you get to pick like what experiment went wrong and what alchemical marvel is the product of your latest ingenuity. So just from there alone, think alchemists. Like our effects, I just relate to like an alchemist, right? So you you can pick some names here. So I've already made three characters. Uh, they are Basil, Ember, and Jazia. So let's start with Basil. So I filled out this character sheet for him. I rolled everything for already. You can refer to the player's guide. I just basically followed the uh, rules for character creation. I rolled their stats. I rolled their hit protection. I rolled their starting gold. I rolled the bonds. And then um, I picked out whatever traits I wanted. So by all means, pick from the uh, table what best suits your needs. If you just if you're not sure what to pick and you're you know, like maybe it's your first time, randomize a character. You'd be surprised what you can get and it's super fun. But for these three characters that I made, I randomized their starting stats and their bonds, but I specifically picked out like what their traits were and also uh, the tables you can roll for the specific background uh, for the RFX. I picked out what I wanted for them based on whatever character I was trying to make. So let's talk about Basil here. So Basil is a well, he's an RFX, obviously, but he's, uh, let's just start with his traits, right? So he's statuesque physique. You can see my little character art I've got here. Let me just bring up an, another picture that shows him in, in color so you can get a feel for him. So he's statuesque physique. He's got soft skin. He's got oily hair. It's all slicked back. He's got a nice chisel face. Uh, he's very formal speech, elegant clothing. He's gregarious, so he's very outgoing and outspoken and like uh, charismatic. And then, he, but he's also nervous. For his bond, he got number nine, uh, which gives him a signet ring. So he owes a great debt to a member of the nobility and can carry their signet ring, which serves as proof of their protection as well as their obligations. So Basil uh, owes a great debt to some noblemen. So he's got a signet ring uh, to signify that. So I've got that in petty items because petty items don't take up inventory space, which is super cool. And he starts out with 10 gold. Now let's talk about his special things he got. So from what he got with his background, if we go look at the R effects, so what experiment went horribly wrong? I picked number three for that. So you were exposed to a long acting truth serum whose effects have yet to wear off. The disorder has its advantages though. You can you cannot repeat lies you've heard either. So that's pretty cool. So I wrote that down in the note section of the uh, uh, character sheet. So under effects of truth serum. So I will know that. Now, what alchemical marvel is the product of my latest ingenuity? I, uh, I picked number four for this one. Mimic Stone records a short phrase that can later be played back. I think that would be really, really cool. Uh, think of like role-playing scenarios, right? So you have this really posh, uh, you know, handsome gentleman who's very formal speech. He's very, uh, very charismatic, um, but he can't tell a lie. But he also can't repeat lies either. So think of like if you're in a in a dialogue with someone and they're like, oh, yeah, the the boss isn't in. You're like, oh, the boss isn't in. If you can say it, then it's truth. But if you can't, then you know it's a lie. So that could be cool, too. Also, since you have your Mimic Stone, if you want to be kind of undercover about it, you can just record that, and then later when like you're by yourself or, or, or with your group, you can play it back and try to repeat it and, uh, you know, see if it's a lie or not. 
I don't know, could work. That's just that's just what I immediately thought of when I rolled Basil, and that could be a lot of cool things. Now, the being able to not tell lies could be very fun, could also be very frustrating depending on what situations the warden puts to your group. So, for example, if you are uh, going to be doing more clandestine operations where you're probably, you probably should be some sort of rogue or something, well, maybe you might not be the best front man for this, but you could still be certainly useful. So that's Basil. He's uh, he's he's under the effects of truth serum. Doesn't say when it's supposed to wear off because you know you were trying to make it and you 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 don't know it was an experiment that went wrong. So the warden can have some fun with that too. Uh, maybe later on down the road it might just wear off, but you might not be sure. So that could be really fun too. Like if you're sitting there like, oh, the boss is not here. Huh. Well, I, I guess he's not. Well, thank you. Have a good one. Maybe it wore off, but you just don't know. So that could be really fun too. Also, since uh, can you perhaps try to recreate it? Can you try to create more? Do you remember the? Do you remember what resources and stuff it took to try to make this truth serum? What equipment did you need to do it? So really, just lots of options for for Basil itself, and this is only the the, the first character, right? <laughs> so he's he also has protective gloves, and he has a needle knife for protection, and you can have a lot of fun with that mimic stone, and then for his bond bond you know maybe you might uh you might be trying to work off that debt that you have to a nobleman so maybe your your experiment that went wrong was you were trying to make this truth serum to i don't know sell to make money for him or maybe it was uh you were under contract for him maybe part of your background is that since your experiment failed so terribly like you owe the guy and he was told he told you not to come back until you can bring it to him so maybe your quest is to recreate that truth serum and give it to him to fulfill your your debt Maybe that can be your character's background. Now, you notice I didn't fill out anything for omens. So omens are typically rolled by the entire party, uh, or, or by one person for the entire party. And it's more for the warden to be able to determine the overarching, like, you know, story of what to do. And it's also useful for players to give something like, oh, you know, I've been hearing that, like, animals are going wild and ravaging people. What are we going to do about that? So then you have this this common goal for the entire group uh, to pursue, but then you also have every character's background goals of what they're trying to do. So with Karen's second edition with the expanded backgrounds, I think it's just it's so much easier to to just jump in and get into a, a the the role of a character and and play that that role if role playing is your thing. So Basil, I think, is a more role play focused character. Again, he's still, he, you could still do combat with him. He's got 10 gold, so you can go to the market and buy some different weapons and, and, and stuff if you want, and, and, and different armor. Maybe you want to make him a combat character. Uh, by all means, you, you can do that. Uh, but primarily, I intended him to be more role playing, which the low willpower score uh, might might kind of hinder that if you're trying to you know persuade people or whatnot uh, but the fact that you can't tell a lie i think would also be really really fun basil would be a fun character to play so that's my first character let's check out my my next one so the next character i came up with is called ember and this character i envision to be more of a combat focused character so just looking at his stat sheet right now you can see he's got he's got pretty good stats i I rolled pretty well for him. He's got 14 strength, 11 dexterity, 13 willpower. So he's a very well-rounded character. Since he has that that high strength, uh, it means he could probably take a bit more damage uh, in combat. And he starts out with four hit protection, so that's pretty good. Uh, you can take maybe a hit or two, uh, or I should say since his hit protection is not hit points, you can avoid a hit or two before you start taking strength damage. Uh, again, zero armor. None of these characters start out with any armor. You could probably take your starting gold. So he starts out with 14 gold. That's the, that's what I rolled for the uh, uh, 3d6. Pretty good rolls there. So you got 14 gold. So if you wanted to, you could go invest in, in some armor. But... Uh, 
Yeah, Ember is very dangerous. So Ember, I thought of like a mad scientist inventor. That was my inspiration for for Ember. So Ember has a scrawny physique, uh, tight skin, frizzy hair. He's got a pale face, a booming voice. He's got frayed clothing. Uh, he's very courageous, but he's also vengeful. So that's pretty cool. Now let's let's talk about what we rolled specifically for his uh, his RFX background. So the experiment that went horribly wrong for Ember was number five. Uh, your recipe worked, but a rival stole the blueprint before your claims could be proven. Take a prototype blunderbuss that does D12 damage that, that does one D12 damage, blast, and it's also bulky. I forgot the uh, uh, bulky part. So on the character sheet, it should take up two slots. I, uh, I I didn't do that right. So just be aware of that. And a taste for revenge. So he's already vengeful. I thought that that, that uh, uh, what's it called? What's that that trait called? Yeah, vice. I thought that that, that vice went, went pretty well for, for Ember. So he's vengeful. So you can see on the uh, character sheet in the uh, notes section, I wrote, bro, someone stole the schematics to my sweet gun. They're going to get it. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's Ember's, you know, backstory is he made this sweet gun, but the schematics were stolen. He's not quite sure how he makes it. So he's just working with a prototype. I'm sure that, that he could remember stuff, but, uh, he could probably try to uh, he could probably try to make other variants of it uh, eventually, given time and the resources and the, the the environment to to do it. So that's really cool. So he's got this really powerful gun. It doesn't give us any any info about like what ammo it takes. Uh, so I assume we're not going to be carrying around ammo. I would assume since the blunderbuss is a bulky weapon, it it, it includes both the the ammo and the uh, 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 weapon. So think about it, like that's pretty high damage output and it's blast, so it can affect multiple people. I think in the rules, let's let, let's take a look at the rules. Let's see, page 65 for combat. So attacks that with the blast quality affect all targets in the noted area, rolling separately for each affected character. So you gotta be careful because blast can also affect your teammates too. But being able to do 1d12 damage to each target and being able to hit multiple targets every turn uh, could be massive. So you could really have a cool team dynamic to where maybe like your, you know, your your party members are trying to maybe distract or impose some sort of disadvantage on uh, the enemy so you can sit there and just blast them every turn. Because chances are you'll probably be doing the uh, most damage. But not it's not guaranteed. You could still be rolling ones and still just whiff shots. Uh, and you could also, if you're not careful, you can also blast your friends too. So there's lots of uh, lots of opportunities for for fun there. Now let, let's talk about his alchemical marvel. So what alchemical marvel is the product of your latest ingenuity? So I picked number one for this one: pyrophoric gel, a sticky green fluid that catches fire when exposed to air and then burns for eight hours cannot be extinguished now it doesn't say how many uses this has i assume it's it's just one use uh but it doesn't specifically say but i'm gonna work under the assumption that it's just w w one use but that could, there's lots of uh lots of fun things you could do with uh, fire that burns for eight hours and can't be extinguished so yeah sticky green fluid it's basically napalm <laughs> Greek fire is basically what it is. When exposed to air, so you can have this this stopper, like this beaker full of stuff, pull the stopper and just whoosh, whoosh, fire everywhere. And it just burns and burns and burns. But you got to be careful not to get it on yourself or your friends or, you know, anything important. <laughs> or else you could really, you could really, you know, you can get burned by fire. So let's talk about the bond that uh, Ember rolled. So it says in bonds, he rolled bond number 12 and he got a letter. So let, let's take a look at that. So bond number 12, during your travels, you met a dying hunter who asked you to deliver a message to their loved ones. Take a letter, Petty, which we have, sealed with tree sap. It is addressed only to the Lord of Winter. That could be a really fun bond, like, for Ember, I I would imagine that Ember's just focused on finding his, his the the person who stole his schematics and just take vengeance, get those back so that he could uh, you know so that they don't take credit for him uh, for his work, and then 
he just has this letter and he he agreed to uh to take it but maybe he doesn't want to so what could happen maybe he wants to open it up and read the uh, uh letter well what happens if he does that uh what happens if he doesn't deliver it to the lord of winter do they come looking for it like do trackers come uh and find him uh who is the uh, uh lord of winter who knows that's up to the warden to uh figure out so there's lots of fun stuff that can be done with that bond there again that, that was just something I, I rolled randomly from this list um I probably should have picked something that actually went with it. I, I probably should have manually selected a bond now that I think about it. Anyway, that's the bond I rolled. That's the bond he's got. But yeah, that's Ember. He's a crazy inventor who makes guns, and he's out for vengeance, and he's not afraid to throw down. <laughs> All right, let's talk about uh, the last character, last but not least. So we've got Jazia. Uh, she is... She's very... A very interesting character. Uh, there's a lot of fun things that you could do if you were playing the character of Jazia. So she's got kind of uh, she's got decent stats. She's got 11 strength and 11 dexterity, so she's just above average there. And she's got 15 willpower. Uh, she's only got three hit protection and no armor, so uh, I rolled pretty well there. She starts out with six gold. And her traits are, she has a lanky physique, she's got tan skin, luxurious hair, she's got a perfect face, precise speech, foreign clothing, she's ambitious, but she's also rude. So this could be really fun. So what she got, let's take a look at her RFX specific table. So what experiment for Jaz uh, for, uh, what experiment went horribly wrong for Jazia? So... Number one is the one I picked. There was an explosion, and you lost your sense of smell. Well, almost. You could sniff out gold as a pig does truffles. Take a tin of uh, take a tin of snuff to dampen the impact. Without it, you are deprived. So she can't smell anything except gold, and she has a tin of snuff to like dampen the impact. But basically, you are deprived if you don't have your tin of snuff. So that could be a really fun thing, but being able to sniff out gold could be a really interesting roleplay mechanic. Now, what did I pick for her, uh, for her alchemical marvel? For her marvel, I picked six, a homunculus. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. Whatever. Deal with it. Noobs. A miniature clay replica of yourself that follows your every command to, to the letter. It hates being enthralled to you and complains bitterly whenever possible. Any damage done to the homunculus is also done to you. So you got this little clay, you know, replica of yourself. I probably should have made it smaller in, in the little character art, but I couldn't get it any smaller in, in Hero Forge. Her character, I think, would be pretty fun to play because she's got that precise speech so she she tells her her uh, her hum homunculus i'm just gonna call it a construct it's it, it's easier for me to say so she basically is in the habit of telling her construct exactly what it wants to do or or what she wants it to do because she has to be very specific because it, it only does exactly what you tell it to do so as a computer programmer, this kind of tickles my fancy because that's what computer programming is. It's telling your computer exactly what to do uh, with a programming language. And, you know, you have to be really explicit and detailed with what you tell it to, to do because it will only do exactly what you tell it to do. You know, if you, you have to be careful with what you tell it. If you say, oh, oh, walk that way, it'll just keep walking. It'll just keep going. It's not going to say like, you know, you know, stand over there, it's going to go and stand there. That That's a, a specific, precise command. But if you tell it to just run away, or like run for your life, or or, or something, or, or get away, uh, it's going to do exactly what you tell it to do. So that could be really fun. And she also has that vice of being rude. Uh, I like to imagine that's because she, as she's learning to command her, her homunculus, the uh, construct she made, she oftentimes, it's kind of like, it's kind of like how some people treat like a Alexa or something where it's like, 
uh, or Siri, like, shut up, Siri, stop it, you know, or just they're just yelling at it. So I think it'd be kind. Of, I think it could be kind of fun to just have uh, <laughs> have this homunculus that just kind of gets yelled at and just hates her, hates being enthralled by her, and it's just a, it's a very you know heads butt relationship where like they're just rough edges things just don't work out so that could be a lot of fun from a role-playing perspective but also like from from a gameplay perspective being able to have a little mini you that can uh go and do things for you could be really cool now it doesn't give any info on like what the stats of the homunculus are so yeah i, I would be curious I, I guess that's up to the warden to uh uh, uh figure out but a little clay version of yourself that's fully autonomous and obeys your every precise command. And then, of course, being able to uh, sniff out gold. You know, maybe you'll be along. Oh, I smell it. There's gold nearby, boys. Let's get it. <laughs> so lots of cool ideas. So there you go. There are three different characters, all very different with the same background. And... Uh, lots of different ways that you can role play uh, these characters and you could get immersed in them and uh, some ideas for what to focus on in the, their gameplay. And But yeah, I, I hope this helps or at least is entertaining. Uh, I had a lot of fun just kind of going through and digging through these characters just kind of seeing what options were there and you know what what would i play if i was to make a character i think out of these three i don't know they're all they're all very fun like jazia could be really cool because of having that homunculus and being able to sniff out gold and role play it could be really fun to have really precise speech and just just be rude to people but basil could be really fun as well uh, but, you know, Ember being able to just blast fools with that sweet gun. I don't know, man. What's your favorite? Let me know. Uh, and, uh, yeah, next, next one I'm going to look at is going to be the Barber Surgeon. So that's my next, that's my next background I'm going to dig into. Um, again, I'm going to make three characters for that and, uh, go over my thoughts of inspiration for the characters, like what I was thinking of. And uh, hopefully hopefully this gives you some ideas. By all means, feel free to rob these characters. If you are so in, if you just absolutely love one of these characters and you want to play it, go ahead, play it, have fun, run wild with it, uh, enjoy. So let me know your thoughts on these characters. What other ideas do you have for an RFX background character? Did I get anything wrong? Uh, did I, uh, did I misconstrue some things? Uh, let me know. Yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in whatever video I, I make next.